What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike to the channel. Welcome, bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football today. Straight up, I'm telling you who you need not to be drafting at the running back position in fantasy football. No gimmicks, no clickbait. Just read them and weep. One of my favorite videos to make all summer long. These are the guys who I put my stamp down on, guys who I just sit here and spew big fact after big fact. Sometimes I get mean, sometimes I get personal. I don't intend for things to get personal in these types of videos, but like a small Spanish woman, these fat running backs know how to rattle my cage. I'm ready to eat if y'all are. Tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. All right, it's time to rip. This first guy, this one hurts. This one hurts because if you followed my content last summer, you almost definitely own some shares of Aaron Jones. If you follow my content this summer and you listen to anything I say, you almost definitely will not be owning Aaron Jones. If you owned him last year, congratulations. You probably had a fantastic year, but you caught lightning in a bottle. And it's time to release that bitch bike into nature. With Aaron Jones, fantastic year by all accounts, but he's getting picked in the middle of the second round right now. And when you look at what Aaron Jones did last year, his end of season numbers were phenomenal. He finished as the RB2 in fantasy football, ended up scoring a zillion touchdowns, and he single-handedly won you weeks, if not the championship. That's all good. That's all fine. But he only played on 61% of the team's snaps last year. And that came with wildly inconsistent boom weeks we had this dude jamal williams who was taking significant snaps away from aaron jones significant carries sometimes significant targets other times if we're still at a point where we need to worry about jamal williams taking away work from our rb1 i've got news for you we don't really have an rb1 okay but he did it last year with jamal williams here and i am not the biggest aj Dillon fan but where Aaron Jones excelled last year. If AJ Dillon takes a little bit of slice of that pie, it's going to be bad news for Aaron Jones, right? That 61% snap rate maybe drops down to 54, 53%. Those 13 goal line carries maybe drop down to eight or seven. And then we're talking about some big problems when it comes to fantasy wise, because if the efficiency dips at all, because his efficiency was off the fucking charts last year, if that dips along with the volume, you're looking at a monster, monster bust year for Aaron Jones. The big yikes moment came for me when I was researching Aaron Jones and I was looking back at the passing work, what he benefited from last year. Why were his passing numbers? You know, they, they ended up being pretty good. He caught almost 50 passes last year but look at the, the makeup of this team right the only player in the nfl last year that had a higher target share than Devonte adams on his respective team was michael thomas when Devonte adams misses a month of the season targets have to go somewhere and that is what happened last year Devonte adams missed a month of the season aaron jones was the guy who benefited inarguably non-arguably ex-arguably i don't know what the fucking preface for arguably is supposed to be here but you can't fucking argue with me. That's the point I'm trying to get across right here. Aaron Jones was the guy that ate because Devontae Adams was gone. With or without Devontae Adams on the field, his rushing numbers stayed exactly the same. 68 rushing yards a game and a rushing touchdown per game. His targets, though, they shot up from 3.5 to 6.75 per game with Adams off the field. He caught 5.5 passes a game without Adams as opposed to just 2.25 with Adams. Adams on the field and the yardage from 16 to 70. He scored all three of his receiving touchdowns last year in those four games where Adams was hurt. Those are not things you could bank on into the future. So when I look at Aaron Jones, I'm saying to myself, should he be on the field for 75% of the snaps? Should he be seeing 60 plus targets in 2020? The answer is yes. He's a fucking awesome running back. He's fun to watch. He's really actually good in real life. But our job as fantasy people is to answer the question, Will that actually happen? And I think the easy answer for Jones is no. And even if you think it's going to be to a lesser extent than the way I'm explaining it right now, mid-second round pick, that's way too fucking risky to get on a guy like Aaron Jones, considering the fact that his receiving numbers were only there because Devontae Adams was off the field. And now you add another thumper into the mix with A.J. Dillon's thick ass. And does that mean less short yardage work for Aaron Jones? Do we see those touchdown numbers scale back? This could be just a, a complete future play for the Green Bay Packers because Jones and Jamal Williams are both off their contract. But I highly doubt they use a pick that high on a guy like A.J. Dillon in the second fucking round not to use him at least a little bit. And that is my concern because Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams are already splitting 
pairs. That's such a fine line last year that you add a third back into the mix and things are going to get extremely, extremely messy. Before you know it, Aaron Jones is going to become the face of every sit-start question around fantasy week in and week out. Talent is undeniable. Situation absolutely stinks. So do not stick your hand in the dumpster expecting to find a diamond, especially for the second year in a row, where you can expect to find a diamond for the second year in a row. This actually will be three, maybe even four years in a row, is the Big Dog's Draft Guide, which goes live to Tomorrow, I'm filming this video and then I'm ripping out the next like six hours to finish the draft guide. It is beautiful. It is perfect. It is literally single handedly the best thing that y'all can buy for your fantasy football season. Not only does it have our entire official do not draft list, so every running back, wide receiver, quarterback, tight end that y'all should be staying away from this year, but it's got our rankings, 250 big board, broken down by positions as well, PPR, standard, half PPR. It's got our top sleepers and undervalued list. It's got our must draft players round by round. It has, as I alluded to yesterday, uh, one of my favorite articles I write all year. It's where I get my stats from, right? The goal line numbers, the target share numbers. I write an article where I drop my top 20, 25 maybe, resources, websites, tools, apps around the fantasy industry that y'all can use. Most of them are free. Some of them are behind paywall. I'll let you know inside the article. If you think my work has been any good throughout the last couple of weeks or months, if you're new subscribers, then the amount of work I put into this fucking draft guide is ridiculous. It's available via mobile, via tablet, via your computer. You could use it anytime, anywhere at your draft. It is updated throughout the entirety of this summer. So it's not just a one-stop shop where you come in and read some shit right now. We update it throughout the entire summer when things happen. According to ADP, we'll change the articles, we'll change the data within there, we'll be dropping videos, we'll be dropping new articles that you will not see on YouTube. So if you appreciate the work here, that is just a very organized, very beautifully put together way of getting all the work, saving y'all time, prepping for your 2020 fantasy football drafts. Easiest way for y'all to get that, go to monkeyknifefight.com. They're sponsoring the draft guide this year. Deposit $10 on their website using the promo code BDGE and you will get our season long guide absolutely free. You'll get the season-long guide for free. You'll also get our Rookie Dynasty Guide, which is on the same website, absolutely free. You get access to all that, as well as Dr. Morse's Injury Guide, looking at every single possibly injured player going into the year, a rating for them, a video breakdown for them. You'll also get $25 to play with on Monkey Knife Fight when you deposit $10 using the promo code BDGE. I don't know how the math adds up, but apparently it checks out, and that's what happens. So you get $75 worth of shit. All those draft guides plus $25 to play with on Monkey Knife Fight for literally $10. So go to monkeyknifefight.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you deposit $10. Make sure you play a game on there. Go play a game on Monkey Knife Fight. Once you do, they will email me letting you know you use my promo code, and then we're in business. I'll email you access to the guide. If you're in a state that's not eligible for Monkey Knife Fight, unfortunately, you'll just have to cop the guide through BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Let's get back to some running bikes. Let's talk about another veteran who had easily the most efficient year of his career, and this is Mark Ingram of the Baltimore Ravens. He is still going in the fifth round of drafts right now. And he was actually on this, you know, he was one of the guys I was avoiding all last year. And I'll, I'll take the L on that, but we're bike. We're bike, baby. And we're better than ever. Getting drafted around the same spot as he was last year. Ingram was good last year and good for one reason when it comes to fantasy. The man had 15 touchdowns. Of the previous eight seasons, he has had one season in which he came within a five scores of that 15 total prior to that he's averaged seven and a half touchdowns per season listen to this shit mark ingram had five receiving touchdowns last year five that was more than christian mccaffrey the man had five receiving touchdowns in his career prior to 2020 he had scored zero receiving touchdowns in six of the previous nine nfl seasons he scored five receiving touchdowns on 26 catches he's not fucking deshaun jackson he's not Nicole hardman there's no reason there's no possible way he's getting even close to those numbers this year and don't get me wrong i like ingram as a running back i think he could have another great year for the ravens as a real life player averaging you know 4.5 to 5 yards per carry but like, come on, y'all. He averaged 1.7 targets per game last year, playing with a quarterback who doesn't dump the ball off to the running back. So I expect his involvement in the passing game to somehow be even more pulled back, more anorexic in 2020 than it was last year, minus the ridiculous touchdown rate, mainly because J.K. Dobbins excels in the passing game, right? He's their new second round rookie running back. I don't expect much volume to be going to the running backs as a whole, but now you have a guy like J.K. Dobbins who's good enough in the passing game to actually command targets. So if there's going to be someone that does 
get the requisite target share to make an impact in fantasy, it's going to be Dobbins, not Ingram. Ingram is 30 years old, coming off a lower body injury at the end of last year. At this point in their career, Ingram at 30, Dobbins coming into his rookie season. Dobbins is a much better running back and will produce at a far higher level on the field than Mark Ingram will. Do I think Mark Ingram starts the year as the guy for Baltimore? Yeah, I do. For as great as Mark Ingram was last year for fantasy, he only averaged 13.4 carries per game. We're talking about a starting running back in the NFL for the most run heavy team in the NFL that didn't eclipse 15 carries more than twice the entire year. If that number dips off at all, which I expect it to because J.K. Dobbins is now in the presence, you're going to be punching yourself in the dick for drafting a medium floor, low upside, 30-year-old running back in Mark Ingram in the fifth round. Please, 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 please do not do that. There's a very good chance that we have an end of the year with J.K. Dobbins like we did with Miles Sanders. Maybe it's not an injury, but Dobbins is good enough to com start commanding more and more and more work to the point where at the end of the year, Mark Ingram is getting eight to 10 carries, like one target a game getting a goal line carry like every other game. So that's what you're depending on. Those are not, those are best ball guys. Yo, you don't want guys who you have no idea which weeks to start them in during season long. We need to start putting that on a pedestal more. We need to stop just fucking saying end of season numbers. We need to stop talking about overall situations. We need to dive in deeper, really look at what the situation could end up being for Mark Ingram. Using your fifth round pick on him and maybe halfway through the year, not being able to start him at all is going to be a huge problem. So stay away from Mark Ingram, please. And I'll be honest, I'm, 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 I'm probably too much of a coward to really put him on this list in its entirety. So I'm not really going to like have him be my guy this year who I'm avoiding. But Joe Mixon, as where he's going right now, he is the RB7 in drafts. And he'll probably go at like the RB6. If I have a top six pick or top seven pick, it will not be on Joe Mixon. I understand that they're going to be improved this year. But that improvement is a, a fact. It's a guarantee. Because they were so fucking bad last year. They were like bottom three offensive line, bottom in scoring, bottom in pay, like bottom in everything that you don't want to see an offense be in. So of course they're going to be better. Doesn't mean they're going to be good. And the video I did last week or two weeks ago, we were talking about identifying league winning high upside running backs, right? The ones who can literally be the Christian McCaffrey's, the ones who can average 20 plus points per game. The things that they had in common were they're catching 50 passes. They're running behind a very, very good offensive line. And they're in an offense that is very, very, very good, obviously leading to more scoring opportunities we don't know all of those are maybes at best for joe mixon so the, the thing with joe mixon is like most people are drafting him thinking that he's a ceiling play at like the seven pick and i am just not on board with that i don't think he has the ceiling to give back what people think he is we're just we're every year we're three years into this now by the third year by the fourth year whatever year we're into by now you've usually seen the ceiling of a running back Gio bernard is still in the fold man the passing work you know if Gio bernard gets cut listen i'll take mixon right off this this list but Gio's still very involved in third downs he's still catching a lot of passes. Mixon finished last year as the RB12, yes, but he was RB17 in points per game. We don't know what we're going to get out of Mixon this year because the beginning of the year, they didn't use, he was horrible in the beginning of the year. The end of the year, they started giving him 28 carries a game. I don't think that's how this offense is going to be set up. I think there will be a lot more pass heavy. Does that mean that Geo gets more involved? Does that mean they use Mixon? Just seems like they don't want to use him in the passing game, and that's what makes me worried. So second round pick, completely fine with Mixon, even at the very, very end of the first round. But where he's going right now in terms of ADP, cannot get on board. The other guys I just want to end this this list with, like sort of like a Mark Ingram, but actually very much like a Mark Ingram. So like the Darrell Hendersons, the Carrion Johnsons, and the Marlon Max. Mostly the latter two, because no one's really drafting Darrell Henderson anymore. But guys, Carrion Johnson and Marlon Mack need to be off your season-long redraft radars. And I keep hearing people like, oh, well, you're getting an RB1 for the first month of the season if you draft those guys. Like, one, the fuck? No, you're not. Because those guys were barely RB1s when they had the backfield entirely to themselves. Like, you were hoping that Marlon Mack put up the RB13 or 14 week if you put him in your lineup last year. You were hoping Carry On didn't get hurt when you put him in your lineup last year. These are guys who you will not be able to... Like, you could barely depend on them last year when it was their backfield. So now you're adding these extremely talented rookies into the mix. DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor. And even if they don't start off as the workhorses, even if those guys are getting eight touches or ten touches, those touches are coming off the plates of Mac and carry on. This comes down to season long where you're actually having to decide who you need to start week over week. And that becomes a problem for these guys. Marlon Mack, carry on Johnson. These are where you want to do the best ball. And I know that's becoming a cliche, like the best ball cop out, but people who even use the cliche, use it wrong. The only time they're ever like, oh, this guy's a good best ball pick is when he's like a deep threat as a wide receiver. These are the better best ball picks. The running backs, th think of yourself this, when you're in the middle of the season, the guys who you constantly have to ask the sit start questions for, guys are like, oh, do I play 
him or him in the flex. Those are the guys who are good best ball picks. Those are the guys that you don't want in season long. The strictly pass catching backs. Tariq Cohen, you want nothing to do with that because you have no fucking idea what you're going to get on a week over week basis. The opportunity cost of the guy you leave on the bench with the two points you get from him and then the 18 points that you miss out from him. So yes, he could finish as a, the running back 34, but for your team, he was realistically the running back 45 because that one week where he exploded and got 10% of his fantasy points wasn't in your fucking lineup. So guys, this is more of like a strategy thing. When you're asking yourself running back by committee, is he talented? Is he going to get work? Stay away from those guys. There's, there's no reason to pull the trigger on these guys because you'll never know when to start them. Capiche? I want to know. I want to know who y'all are staying away from. Who? What running backs at their cost? Maybe you know what? Let me know a running back you're staying away from, no matter what. You don't care about the cost. They're just completely off your draft board. And then two, I want to know some of the running backs you think whose ADPs are horrible right now that you would not be touching anywhere within like 15 or 20 picks of where they're currently going. They dropped you two or three rounds. Listen. Listen, every man has his price. I understand that. But show some love and drop that down below. While you're down there, hit the button that looks just like this. That would be called a thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. I think we're going to do the same video, but for wide receivers on Thursday. But between now and Thursday, the draft guide drops, y'all. So if you do cop it, also forgot to throw this in there. I'm going to be going live tomorrow on YouTube to celebrate the launch of the draft guide. Probably around 12.30 p.m., 1 p.m. So set your timers, mark your calendars, tattoo it on your flesh. 12.30, 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're going live on YouTube on Wednesday, July 1st. We'll just hang out. We'll drink some tequila. We'll talk some fantasy. We'll talk some football. We'll talk some life. That's what it's all about, baby. So come join me tomorrow. Make sure you drop a comment down below. Let me know that you showed some love and I'll show some love back to you. As well as, you know, Wednesday, Thursday videos, whatever, whatever. Let me know how you're enjoying the draft guide. That would be wonderful because we've put a lot of work in behind the scenes to bring this to fruition and bring it to light to y'all. So um, any support is much, much, much appreciated. Again, monkeyknifefight.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you deposit 10, play a game on there, and the rest will take care of itself. You'll get $25 to play with. You'll get all of our draft guides absolutely free with that $10 deposit. If you're not eligible, bigdogsdraftguide.com. I got nothing but love for you guys. I hope you got a fantastic week ahead of y'all planned. We'll keep grinding over here if y'all keep watching. <laughs>